Having seven brothers and sisters is quite common in Saint Laurent du Maroni. Lolita is 32 years old and raises her seven children on her own. She is a foreigner, as is one third of French Guiana's population. The family lives in a small hut made of scrap iron with no electricity or running water. <laughs> On land, rented out illegally, which floods in the rainy season. It's bad here. You can't do anything. You can't grow anything here because it dies. The landlord gave us a flooded land. Why didn't she give us another one there? <laughs> Every morning and evening, the family heads for the creek, a small waterway near the unpaved road. They use it to wash, clean the dishes, and also to catch fish. When there is no fish, it's not good, because we're poor. I like fish. My mother likes fish. Lolita left Suriname for Guyana in 2005. At the time, she had just two children and wanted a better life in France. Like thousands of other immigrants, she moved into one of the many shanties of Saint Laurent, the makeshift homes fashioned from metal sheets and pieces of wood. Come on, make your bed. Let's show them how you do it. Authorities euphemistically call these spontaneous living areas. What they really are, of course, are slums. Officially, Saint Laurent has a population of 45,000, a number expected to rise to 150,000 by 2030. The city is just two kilometers from Suriname and acts as the gateway to Guyana for illegal immigrants, not just from Suriname, but also from Haiti and Brazil. With such a dramatic rise in the population, the city's infrastructure is hopelessly insufficient. The hospital's maternity ward was designed for nine babies, but now has to care for as many as 20 a day. Worse still, the intensive care unit is not equipped to care for premature babies. There was no room for this infant at the main regional hospital in Cayenne, to which his mother and twin sister had been transferred. We have a 26-week-old child who has been here for three days but was supposed to be in the KN hospital. Due to a lack of space there, we have to keep him here and take care of him until there's room in KN. And his little sister is in KN? Yeah, she's in KN. The situation is not unusual, as every hospital in Guyana is overstretched. Dr Kubje has little choice but to keep these newborns in his unit, even if the staff is not trained to cope with such young patients. Our hospital is not designed for this. It's not equipped to accommodate a 26-week-old premature baby. That's what I call putting the life of a baby in danger. We're putting them in danger with these conditions. We have to say it loud. The level of care that's given to him is not what he should receive. Are you angry? Yes, it makes me angry, because we need training. The paramedical staff has to be trained in order to take care of kids of that age, and that's not the case. The staff are exposed to a situation which doesn't make them comfortable. You need self-confidence to do this job. You put a 26-week-old baby in the hands of a nurse who's just come out of school. Can you imagine the stress that you create, the drama that you create? That's why sometimes the staff give up and say, no, I can't work here anymore. Valérie Jolie, a midwife, looks after the mothers-to-be. In 15 years of service, she has seen the number of early pregnancies explode with an increasing number of women from Suriname and Haiti coming to Saint Laurent to give birth. Initially designed to handle 600 childbirths a year, the hospital saw 2,800 new arrivals in 2017. Finding room for patients is a nightmare. <coughs> the hospital is a microcosm, a mirror of society of what's going on. We don't know how to regulate the flow of migrants. I don't want to get too political, but I know for sure that patients are here and need to be looked after. It's not our role to say and to acknowledge if they have the right or not to be here. 
on voit aussi qu'après... I also see girls I helped bring into the world 15 years ago who are mothers themselves now. Mis en place pour accompagner les familles. Nothing has been done to support families, to educate them against sexual risks. Vraiment une prévention au niveau des risques sexuels. Our region is the one in France with the highest rate of AIDS. We see all of this happening and we're warning people around us. But nothing is being done to help us improve health, family planning or social conditions. A new hospital is to open this year. When construction began four years ago, no one predicted the population would grow as much as it has. Some nursing staff say the new maternity unit is already too small. Police are on patrol early in the morning along the Moroni River on the Guyana Surinam border. Be careful, watch your arms. Good morning, police control. ID, please. No, I don't have. This dugout canoe is a taxi from Suriname heading to Saint Laurent. These ladies have some fruits and vegetables and are going to the market to sell whatever they can. It's no big deal. We're heading back with seven passengers on board. We don't have the ID for six of them. As the Maroni River is a border, these Suriname vendors don't have the right to cross it without valid ID papers. Under French law, the police officers have to arrest them. After a drawn-out judicial procedure, they will be escorted back to Suriname, a six-minute canoe ride away. Locals and even the police themselves might agree it's an absurd situation, as both sides of the river are considered one common area. Some families live on both sides, and they don't have any papers, but they're still crossing to attend a family event. They spend just half a day here, so we check and decide if we let them go. We are not discouraged because sometimes we arrest people with a criminal track record. Arresting people during these controls here and there encourages us to pursue our mission. But the illegal sale of fruits and vegetables is by no means the most serious or dangerous issue here. Cocaine trafficking is a plague in Saint Laurent. The city is a strategic transit point for South American drug lords who want to smuggle their product into France and Europe. They pay anyone ready to swallow bags of cocaine and then fly to Paris. Sometimes they carry more than one kilo at a time, as shown in this X-ray. This high school student is a former drug smuggler. In 2016, he was working as a part-time water taxi driver, shuttling between the Saint Laurent River and Suriname. Cedric meets us in a cemetery where he cleans graves to make a little money. A guy approached me once. I don't know how he managed to get my phone number. He was harassing me. He asked me to carry drugs, cocaine. He knew very well what to say, and he was very convincing. And there were even some friends telling their stories and telling me to go for it. Then Cedric's cell phone and bike were stolen. Back home, his mother was struggling to pay the bills. The teenager, desperate for money, finally agreed to work for his recruiter. He said he would give me 10,000 euros. Actually, it was just to drag me into his trafficking. At one point, I realized he was lying, but it was too late. Cedric was soon mixed up with drugs. Several dealers took him to a remote hotel in Suriname. I started the next day. They presented me 30 bags filled with cocaine in a basin of water. I swallowed them all. They came back with another 30 for me to swallow, then again 30, until it was over. And how many could you take? 102 in about an hour and a half. 102 bags, more than one kilo of cocaine inside his stomach, worth some 80,000 euros. But Cedric was arrested even before he could board the plane to Paris. 
That's when I said to myself, it's game over. My mom is going to know. I was not feeling well. My body was hot. I thought I was going to die. And that's why I confessed before it was too late. The teenager was taken to hospital and then put under judicial investigation. As a minor, he faces a fine of 5,000 euros. Saint Laurent du Maroni is the ideal place to get access to desperate young people who have no resources, no money, nothing. They're seeking to make easy money. But they find it's not that easy to be a drug smuggler. French police say only one in ten of 4,000 smugglers is ever arrested and put behind bars. Two months after the start of term, Lolita is told her four-year-old son, Marek, has finally been admitted to kindergarten. He had been on a waiting list. Many children cannot attend class. There simply aren't enough schools, even if each year the city council constructs a new school. This prefabricated structure was hastily built in 2012. The children are Bushinengue, descendants of Suriname slaves from both sides of the Moroni River. At home, they speak Saramaka, Juka, or Aluku native dialects. They learn French at school. There are several dialects completely different from French. To break down the language barrier, I had to adapt myself to the children. I had to learn their language to make myself understood, to make sure they could understand what I'm saying. 60% of the city's youth is unemployed. The Guyanese, as well as foreigners, look to France, 7,000 kilometers away, as their only salvation. France, however, has still to build them a future. French Guiana.